once upon a time, four and a half years ago on this channel. Hello, my name is Marty All, and today we're going to be looking at five cartoons I like, but no one else does. My bed, Freddy's bed, Bella's bed. Our bedrooms had a complete overhaul in February. It's a nice view up from Bella's bed. That was definitely a night to remember. So far in my life, best night ever. Until I have sex for the first time and that night overtakes it. Hi. So how are you start me up? And let me give you a little backstory. On the 3rd of September 2017, when I was only 15, that rhymed, he, I did a video called Top 5 Cartoons That I Like That No One Else Does. You don't need to have a brain to know what it was about. That video was literally only my 23rd video out of the 429 videos I have now. It was literally season 1, episode 23. So yeah, it was a very early video. In fact, it's because it was a very early video. Because that video was made at a time where my first video wasn't even two months old yet. That video is pretty shit now. So I'm going to press the reboot button on it. You know, a year and a half ago, during lockdown, when I reacted to those list videos that I made, made me realise how shit those videos are. Well, except this one. I actually didn't mind that one. So, I'm going to start again with the list videos. Let me get, let me make one thing clear though, it's, this is not a brand new video idea that I just come up with right now, I'm just remaking a video that I've already previously did, so the list is not going to be different, if you've watched the original and you remembered what the five cartoons were, it's going to be the same for this video, I just want to give it a fresh new look. This is actually my second time talking about this video, as I did do another video talking about that video in a commentary because it was at the time my most popular video. A link to both the original video and the commentary video. Let's start this. Hi! Bot Ugly Martians. Bot Ugly Martians is an American Canadian sci fi CGI animated series that started to air to Nickelodeon CITV on the 19th of February 2001 and it ran for only one season with 26 episodes that consist of your standard usual 22 minutes and it came to an end on the 21st of February 2003. It lasted for two years and two days 
and it did have merchandise such as mugs and comics etc. I remember in the original video I said it started in 2000, which is incorrect, that was false on my end, my bad. This is a cartoon where if you try to find a review where the person reviewing it had nice things to say, you're going to be looking for ages. Hence why I cannot watch reviews of this show, because it's just so depressing. Not because I like the show, it's just because every single review of the show is the same thing, and it's so boring. Oh, the show looks ugly, or oh, Angela's arse looks massive. Okay, first off, one, why does that matter? Two, how would you know unless you looked? And that does not make you any better, mate. You're the one who was looking. Anyway, leave the arse alone. It's a good ass. I ain't never seen a ass like that. The way you move it. But no, seriously, on a serious note, I told Light to Dark about the show, and she saw a picture of it, and she didn't even think it looked that bad. It's not just her, because I was just minding my own business when out of nowhere, out just out of the complete blue, pun intended, rapper Lonsky says to me, Easy, Mr. Marty, you like Bugly Martians? Yeah! One of my absolute favourite cartoons of all time. People say how the graphics are ugly, but I think that's a stupid argument because, one, it's called But Ugly Martians for a reason. If it wasn't ugly, then it would be completely missing the point. That's like ordering a spicy meal and then complaining because it's spicy. Don't order spicy food then, because you get what you pay for, you know what you're in for. I know those are two completely different things, but you... You know what I'm trying to say. Two, it was made in 2001, the year before I was born. The technology was still brand new at the time. And don't say, well Toy Story was made in 1995 and that looks ten times better. Pixar are powerhouse gods, giant beasts when it came to the hardware. Whereas the people who made this was just a small, barely known company who just wanted to make a little kids cartoon. Well, Jimmy Neutron was made in the same year and the graphics look better. Okay, that is true, but to be honest, not a whole lot. Like, come on, let's be real here. But even then, st I can still debunk that because the people who worked on Jimmy Neutron got the help of Nickelodeon, who is, again, a big company who knew what they were doing. The people who worked on Buttergly Martians didn't get the help from Nickelodeon. They had to do it all on their own, and can you see the difference? What happens when a huge company gets has your back, which is something that they didn't get to have, and it shows, but that's not a bad thing, because the show is called But Ugly Martians, for a reason. I genuinely don't know what the problem is. To anyone who says that the graphics are so wrong, they are wrong. I'm sorry, right, but that is bullshit and unfair, and I'm fed up with it. This show has every right to look like the way it does. And three, it's a show set in the future, in the year 2053. And it has aliens in it. And again, it's called But Ugly Martians. Wouldn't you want it to look strange? Because it is a strange concept anyway in general, regardless what the animation looks like. And besides, it suits it. It's got a charm to it. Another complaint that I hear people say is the fact that it's silly. Well, I mean, it is a kid's show, and at the end of the day, kids find anything funny. Even though Light to Dark is 19, she has the mental age of a 12-year-old. She could watch the video of Dad's game sellotaping himself to the chair all day. I'm not saying this show is perfect, because it isn't. I'll admit, there are some stuff that other people have said that even I can agree with. Like, yes, they always fight in the desert, and yes, I know, the show's shorter name is B-U-M, but those are minor flaws. The fact that the plot is about the Martians living with peace on Earth is, in my opinion, one of the best messages in cartoon history. We need to encourage more shows like this. Every character is done perfectly. If you hate this show because of the voices, or the characters, or the music, that's fine. But hating the show just because of the graphics is not really fair because it was a project of its time. Yes, I know it's aged, but this show had a lot of underrated potential. There was going to be a second season, but it never happened. And the theme song is one of the best I've ever heard. 
I don't care what anyone says. I could literally listen to it all day on a loop. It's catchy, everything rhymes, and the instruments in the background are just so great. But not just that, the end credit music and the BKM jingle, which by the way stands for Bot Kicking Mode, and the music videos that happen in the show, I love very much. One of the reasons why the show was cancelled is because of the low reviews, because of what I mentioned earlier, the overall look of the show, even though that's the whole point. So basically, the show got cut short by idiots. I'm vexed. I really am. Because I had the figures, I had the board games, and no, they didn't make me feel bored. I had the pictures, I had paintings of it, I had the PC games, t-shirts, posters, and I still have DVDs of it to this day of a handful of episodes. Not every episode. And a PS2 game and GBA game. But no... No, we don't want to have a show that has ugly in the title and actually lives up to its name. No, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see a cartoon where it encourages people to be happy on Earth. No, 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 we don't want to see that. We want to see a show called Breadwinners where it has ducks twerking their arse. What is wrong with people? Blake, thank you for getting me into this show. Give this show a chance. Yes, the graphics are a little bit creepy, but it's meant to be. It's supposed to be. Next cartoon. <laughs> Sonic Underground. Sonic Underground is an adventure cartoon started airing to, on Pop on the 6th of January 1999 and it ended on the 23rd of May 1999. Only four months, two weeks and three days. All Of all the Sonic cartoons, Sonic Underground has always been my favourite, even when I was a kid and had stickers on the wall. In my opinion, it goes Sonic Boom. Me, my sister and many others think that Sonic Boom is a weird one because I don't like what they did with the characters, both in looks and personalities. I mean, Sonic is a dickhead anyway, but now he has blue arms and has a really gay scarf on him. Knuckles looks like he's on steroids. He looks like the Ninja Turtles from the new from the latest films. And his personality went from being tough but gullible motherfucker who was originally a villain to a complete dum dum who'll eat planks of wood thinking they're bananas. Ink Bendy says she wishes they didn't put sticks in, but I disagree. She gets hate because of her energetic and crazy persona. But that's the point, that's her character. I find it interesting. She was introduced as the main character just for Sonic Boom. A show adding a brand new character does not automatically mean that they have ran out of ideas. Sometimes, after the same characters for 20 plus years can get a little boring. So they add a new character to not only keep the old fans from drifting apart and sticking around, but also to give a fresh new look even though it is the same series. There are only two characters in Sonic Boom who are even better than they originally were and that's Tails and Amy. Tails in the original was the smart but anxious, cowardly and shy sidekick who needed Sonic to motivate him to carry on their dangerous adventure. In Sonic Boom he's a lot more mature out of his shell in terms of confidence there's even been moments where it's the other way around, where it's Tails trying to convince Sonic to follow through with whatever is going on. Amy went from being a typical mental squeaky teenager who has a crush on the main character, who will angrily chase Sonic with a mallet if she doesn't get her way, to being a strong independent woman who acts like the mature role model slash mother figure who tries to put out the fire when things get heated. But that's it. The plots are stupid, the jokes are unfunny, and they repeat themselves. I hate Sonic Boom. It's not true Sonic in my eyes. Then fourth place, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Third, Sonic Sat AM. Second, Sonic X. And lastly, Sonic Underground. You could argue that The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is more funnier, but I think Sonic Underground is more cleverer, because not only is the humour... Not only more funnier, but more relatable, from watching the trio argue like real siblings do, to watching Dingo's fixation and obsession with Sonya, which, 
okay, yeah, it's a little creeper. But then again, it's real. In real life, when you're a teenager, and when it happens to everyone who's past their teenage years, when you first have a crush on someone, you're unintentionally creepy. Because you just can't help yourself. It happens. It happened to me when I was with Amber. <coughs> I'm turd. I know Dingo is not a teenager, but you know what I'm trying to say. The humour of this show is relatable, but still has a cartoony feel to it, being a kid's show. But it has its right balance of it, and knew when to have the right time for it to show. For example, Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman as his haters like to call him, his personality, or egg-ality in this case, that he is an evil, angry, determined, mad scientist, but at the same time, he's very goofy at times. That's his character, and that's where Sonic Saturday AM and Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog failed, in my opinion. Hence, they are just not as good as Sonic Underground, and Sonic X for that matter, because in the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, they made Dr. Robotnik so goofy that it completely missed the whole point of his character. Because, yes, he's acting like an idiot, but he's barely showing his dark side. Even in Sonic Boom, again, he says lol and has civil moments with Sonic, calls him bro and asks him questions about Amy like, come on man, what are you doing? And then in Sonic Sat AM, which fucked it up in another way, ooh, uh, the Sonic Sat AM, they made him too dark. And no, I'm not a snowflake. I don't plan on being one anytime soon either. What I'm saying is, if this was a different character, then I wouldn't have really minded and wouldn't have really cared as much. My point is, that is so terrifying in Sonic Sat AM that, again, it's missed the mark of his character because, yes, he is so serious, but he's not, he's not showing his other side to him, his idiotic side of him. And this is where Sonic Underground succeeded because it shows both his dark side and light side to him. Sonic Underground got his character right. Sonic X did it right too. One unique thing about Sonic Underground is how the three main characters, Sonic, Manic and Sonya, have shaped medallions that represent a different instrument for each hedgehog. And when they touch them, they turn into the actual instrument. Sonic has a guitar. Sonya has a keyboard, and Manic has a drum kit. And they're not just for playing music, just for the sake of it. They also use it for fighting as well. Sonic's guitar can create sound waves, Sonya's keyboard can shoot laser beams, and Manic's drum can make and create earthquakes, mate. That rhymed, hey. When powers combined, they can also snap Robux back to reality. And they can't just use them whenever they wanted, because they get drained and have to recharge for a bit after a while of use. Why? Because in every episode, it has one song each per episode. I did a top 10 list of my f top 10 favourite Sonic Underground songs way back in 2019, January. If you haven't seen it, link below. Even the main characters have different personalities, or hedgehog -alities. Sonic is the leader, but however, he can be very stubborn. Sonya is the smartest, but sometimes she can be of a bit of a goody two-shoes. And Manic is the fun one, but he has the attitude of a hippie slash stoner. Even the villains in the show, Sleet and Dingo, give me scratch and grounder from the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog vibes. Because you have Dingo, who's the short but big one who's the idiot, just like Grounder. And you have Sleet, who's the tall, skinny leader, who's always angry because he gets blamed because of Dingo, just like Scratch. It also has Knuckles as well, as well as, a, as, well as other new characters as well, that unfortunately never came back. The plot of this show is that Sonic and his brother, Manic and sister Sonya, the triplets, are on a quest to find their long-lost mum, Queen Alina, who didn't want to but had to leave them behind at such a young age to keep their prophecy safe. Which is a very sad but wholesome concept, and those few scenes where the mom shows up and the three start crying is very emotional and deep, and again, relatable. Because people in real life don't really know their mums very well, and there's no dad in Sonic Underground, which is another thing that can happen in real life. 
Unfortunately, the show never got a proper ending because the show was originally going to have 65 episodes but was cut short due to low ratings. There's only 40 episodes, which is really stupid. And they can't bring Manic and Sonya back because those two are not owned by Sega. They're owned by Dick. And if Sega brought them back, Dick would sue them. The only way Manic and Sonya could bring them back is if Sega and Dick collaborated and worked together. Get on it. Please, bring Manic and Sonya back for God's sake. Just think about how well the connection with those two with fans do. The fact that it lasted for only four months, give or take, and people on YouTube still trying to pretend to be those two because they don't want the characters to die out and get forgotten about. They're trying to keep those two alive, to keep their spirit of the pair of them and educate young Sonic fans to Sonic's history. Manic and Sonya are still, to this day, loved because they have potential. Next cartoon, Three. The Cleveland Show. The Cleveland Show has 88 episodes split by four seasons and started airing to Fox in America on the 27th of September 2009 and ended on the 19th of May 2013. A three year, seven months, three weeks and one day it ran for. Even though it hasn't got any legs. The Cleveland Show is an American sitcom and is a very mixed bag. But in all honesty, I actually prefer it over Family Guy. Why? Well, let me explain. In Family Guy, everyone in the family is an arsehole. Hey, just like my family. And so because of this, because they're all arseholes, you don't really feel sorry for them if something bad happens to them. And because of that, you don't really relate. Instead, you just end up laughing at the show instead of with it. However, in the Cleveland show, Everyone in the family has their reasoning on why they act the way they do. Because it's a way they are. But no, seriously. For example, Rollo acts his age. A lot of the stuff that he does makes us look back on when we was five. and Which is not what we can say for Stewie. I know he's younger, but still, don't get me wrong. What Stewie does it is funny, but it's not relatable. Some people may ask, why does that matter? Well... It's because when you can relate to the character, it hits you harder to home and you enjoy it more. Like Roberta, who's 16, she has her moments where she can be a bitch. But then again, what teenage girl isn't? There's no such thing. Every single teenage girl from the age of 13 and 19 is a bitch. Yes, even light to dark. And even if you're not a teenager anymore and you're a female who's past your teenage years, think Bendy, then you were a bitch. When a girl reaches her 20th birthday, they're not a bitch anymore. They're a mega bitch. And that is exactly what Donna is. Donna Kebab. But then again, like Roberto, she has a reason because she's angry because her family uses her like a slave. And her childhood and Robert wasn't the best. I know Lois was dealt the same duff card as Donna. But I like Donna more because at least her voice is not as ear bursting as Lois is. The main character Cleveland is in my opinion 10 times funnier, lovable and responsible than Peter. From watching Cleveland's hilarious reactions to whatever silly shit Cleveland Jr is doing. To the screen times of Roberta's Eminem wannabe boyfriend, Ferdeline. And that is why I would just overall watch this instead of Family Eye. Because the Cleveland show doesn't use shock jokes just for the sake of it. My only complaint is the cutaways. Like Family Guy, the cutaways ruin the pacing of the episode. And feels like they only exist because it's a cop out for when they run out of ideas. But that's it. All in all, this show is more real than Family Guy, which makes the viewing experience so much better in my eyes. And whenever someone does do something, they always get their comeuppance. Next cartoon. Cool! Don't open your mouth. American Dad. American Dad is an American... Well, no shit, it's called American Dad. <laughs> ...sitcom that started airing to Fox on the 6th of February 2005, and it's still going. Currently... Uh, 330 episodes and counting with 17 seasons. It's been airing for 17 years, 3 months, 3 weeks and 2 days at the time of this video's upload date. 
even though American Dad has even worse shock humour than Family Guy, it's one of the more political cartoons, but not in a way where it's insulting, it's political punctuation. Out of the three main cartoons that Meth McFartland has made, Family Guy is my least favourite, then Cleveland Show, then American Dad, and all three of them play on ITV2 in England. I don't mind American Dad at all. And the reason being is, one, Stan's ridiculous chin, but also, secondly, the fact that it's a setting where the father of the family, Stan, works for the CIA, which stands for Clitoris's I Adore. But despite that, everyone else in the family has a very different personality to everyone else. Francine has a very sassy, but also cheeky attitude, but in a good place. Steve is your typical 14-year-old, four-eyed geek who will do everything at no lengths to lose his virginity with a nice girl, but still somehow ends up being the coolest one of his three friends. Hey, just like me, like talking Ben D and DB Red, that's also relatable, because I also am the coolest one of the four of us. Klaus is a German perverted skier in the body of a goldfish who pervs on Francine. And Haley is a 19-year-old, hippie, drug-taking, Mother Nature bitch who Cartman from South Park would hate to meet. And Haley's husband, Jeff, too, because he has the same personality as Haley. Haley is a liberal. She hates guns and hates Donald Trump. But Stan is a Republican. He loves guns and loves Donald Trump. To which Haley calls him a fashion in response. And as you can imagine, all these different personas living in a house where the dad has a very egotistical attitude towards politics. As a result, it does sometimes end up in headbots, fights, argument, and clashes. But that's the glory of the show because it teaches lessons and messages by showing propaganda and putting a mould to the story, even to the point where it can change your mind, but not because they forced it upon you, because it made you stop and think. Now, there is one other great thing about this show, and that's Roger the clumsy alien who likes to pretend, even though he's just one character, but because of his multiple costumes and wigs that he owns, the doors are open to so many different personas, all from the same character. But, there is one last cartoon that I like that no one else does. Next cartoon, the final cartoon that we need to talk about. One. Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers is an American sitcom just like the other cartoons I previously mentioned. The original, unaired pilot demo was made in 2010, however the show didn't start properly on Fox until the 9th of January 2011, and later Comedy Central in Britain. After airing for 11 years, 4 months, 2 weeks and 6 days, it has come out with 238 episodes with 12 seasons and a film, which... By the way, me and Light to Dark saw that in View Cinema the day it came out. I won't spoil it, but what I will say is it was so good that it's actually made Light to Dark want to check out more episodes of the series. Because she wasn't that familiar with it before watching the film. I absolutely love Bob's Burgers. I remember in the original video that this video is remaking, I said that Bob's Burgers is my favourite cartoon in general. But then later on, in one of my Crash Team Racing walkthrough videos, I said that South Park overtook it. But now, honestly, I don't have a favourite cartoon anymore, because it does depend on my mood, and how long I've been watching it, and can get a bit bored of it, and want to watch something different. I still love it, nonetheless. The family feels like a real-life family, because even though they all have different personalities, I can relate to all five of them. I can relate to Bob because he's the caretaker of the restaurant and he's always stressing because of whatever's going on and is the one to act serious when things are going wrong. I can relate to Linda because she's a positive thinking, peacemaking angel who loves to make everyone around her happy. I can relate to Tina because she's at that age, 13, where her feelings towards what she likes and enjoys and her kinks are going all mental and it's no wonder why her bucks are so horny. 
I can relate to Gene because he's your typical 11 year old boy who is very hyperactive all the time. He's so happy, so fun, yet one of the nicest characters in the show. I can relate to Louise because she has a confident, I don't care, I don't give a shit, I'm tough attitude. But when the going gets tough, she does show a more vulnerable side to her. She's quite psychotic, but not in a bad way. It's just her way of making her feel liked. Because every now and again, she will get bullied either by a boy called Logan or girls at her school. Because she doesn't want to feel little, even though she's only nine. She likes to act older by doing stuff her older siblings wouldn't do. Because she's the shortest one in the family, obviously being the youngest one, she will not go anywhere without her pink hat with bunny ears. There are multiple reasons, but one of the reasons why she likes to wear them is because it makes her look taller, even though it's just a hat. Maybe a top hat is what Light to Dark is missing, and all that combined makes Louise quite angry sometimes. But she's not a bad person, she's just chaotic, that's all. See, Family Guy, that's how you give character development. Like, in real life, I'm chaotic good, light to dark is lawful good. And this is just the main family. There are so many other characters that have personalities, from Teddy and Mort, the two regular customers, to Gail, the very strange auntie. There's always an auntie weirdo in the family. And the stories don't go overboard with the wackiness. The stories are so true and down to earth. The characters are so lovable. The bad characters do get their comeuppance. The soundtrack, I love it. All those elements combined to make one amazing cartoon. The best of the 2010s. And that is why Bob's Burgers is my number one choice for cartoon guilty pleasures. Guilty conscience. Anyone who's watching this video, if you haven't already, I recommend you give a couple of episodes each of all five cartoons I've mentioned. Or, in Ink Bendy's case, only four cartoons because she's already watched Sonic Underground. Yeah, because I'm genuinely curious. Watch a couple of episodes of all five of the cartoons and tell me what you thought. So, that was my top five cartoons that I like that no one else does. I hope you enjoyed it. In fact, I hope you enjoy it even more than the not as good original. If you like this video then share, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if anyone out there thinks that my videos are crap, let me know why in the comments and hopefully I'll improve. And if you're new to this channel or you've just found it, feel free to subscribe if you want. I'm Artie All. Bye. I will see you very soon. I'm out. Random photos and videos after the credits. Cast, Martial as I Martial. Special thanks to Martial and you for watching, produced and directed by Martial. The person who sent you this either has a crush on you or just drop kicked a child all the way to Mars. You choose which one you think it is. Ready? What? what was that? It's not much. Is, is what? Did someone just fight? It makes yeah. it. No, 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 no. What I did was uh, <laughs> I took a big breath before he squeezed and I made a noise. It sounded like a duck. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs>
really impressed with that. Yeah. See, you can put this into your death bank. <laughs> 